Hey guys, this is the last video in a series that we are titling Socially Efficient and Socially Inefficient Market Outcomes. Okay, it's the third video and the last video. And here is the deal. We are exploring markets. And why are we exploring markets? Because we have markets at the base of so much of our economic activity, okay? For so many goods and services that we are producing, I would say the vast majority of goods and services, but not all, we have markets at the base, okay? And what is a market? A market is a place that decentralized suppliers acting in their private interests, this is marginal private cost, focused only on their private cost, marginal private cost, are making decisions along with demanders, okay, decentralized demanders, making decisions based on their private benefits, marginal private benefits, okay, only the costs and benefits that they internalize. And we're trying to see how well these markets that we put at the base achieve maximum social surplus, or what we're calling a socially efficient market outcome. Now, Here's the deal. Oftentimes, most of the times, they do not, okay? In fact, a lot of people say it has to be a pretty stylized world for market left completely alone to achieve maximum social surplus, okay? For most of the time, most markets, maybe not all, there could be a few, they're gonna fall somewhat short. Someone, some might just fall a little bit short. If they just fall a little bit short, we still might wanna leave them alone. Others might fall quite a bit short. And then we ask ourselves, can the government come in with intervention and do something about that result, okay? And there's all kinds of ways they can intervene. Just a few is pre-unit taxes, pre-unit subsidies, price ceilings, price floors, things like that, okay? Now, Here's what we've also been doing in this series. We've been talking about the three types of efficiencies that economists look at, okay? A lot of, no, a lot of um, focus is on, I think, allocative efficiency and a little bit on productive, but very little microeconomics courses focus on distributive, and I want you to focus on all three because all three have to be achieved to truly get to maximum social surplus. So what are these efficiencies? Here they are. Productive efficiency. We are producing in the least costly manner, okay? So the firms that are producing the good are the lowest cost producer, okay? They're wasting the, the, the least amount of resources. I guess, in fact, we'd say they're not even wasting resources. We've, you know, if they're the lowest cost producers, that's who we want. They're doing the right thing with the resources, in fact. Distributive efficiency. Distributive efficiency is the good is distributed to those who value it the most, okay? The good is distributed to those who value it the most. And then allocative efficiency. We've allocated our resources uh, so that we're producing the right amount of the good, okay? This has to do with are we overproducing or underproducing the good? Or did we allocate our resources um, properly so that we're producing the right amount of the good? We didn't overallocate our resources and overproduce the good or underallocate our resources to the production of good and underproduce the good, okay? So if you can be all three of these, produce it in the lowest costly way, distribute it to those who value it the most, and produce the right amount of the good, you are going to achieve a socially efficient outcome, okay? Now, here's a market, right? Here's a market. And if it just so happened for this particular market that the um, supply, which is always MPC, if the MPC also equaled the MSC, marginal social cost, which considers all uh, private costs and external costs and benefits related to production, okay? If S equals MPC equals MSC and demand equals MPB and MSB, which is marginal societal benefit or marginal social benefit, if these things were all equal, we would get a situation where we'd be allocatively efficient. We would be producing the right amount of the good. And then economists say, and if we're allowing price to do its thing, which is what markets do, we're going to achieve this price market or price equilibrium right here. We're going to produce right here. It's going to be Q-op because MSB and MSC are going to intersect right where my MPC and MPB are. So I've got my Q-op. We're going to be allocatively efficient. And then we're going to be distributive and productively efficient. Why that? Because when you have price coordinating economic activity, okay, when you have price coordinating economic activity, what that means is the producers who are represented by the dots down here are going to be the ones that produce the good. If there's any producers out there that have dots up here, those producers will not end up producing the good, okay? So only the most efficient producers will remain in the marketplace, okay? Those with the higher cost, the higher cost, they won't produce the good. Then when we talk about the demand side, we've got price rationing the good. Only those who have 
an expected benefit, who put an expected benefit from getting the good above the price are going to get the good. People that have an expected benefit below the price are not going to get the good. So the only people who are going to get the good are going to be represented by this portion of the demand line. The only producers are going to produce good are represented by this portion. And so we as economists often say, there we go. We are productively efficient, distributively efficient, and allocatively efficient. We have maximized social surplus. Now, there's an issue, which I alluded to in the last video that I'm going to talk about again, okay? That is oftentimes pretty close to the right answer, but there is a pretty big issue in there, okay? And that has to do with the demand curve. Demand is based on willingness and ability, not just willingness, okay? Willingness and ability. And in market-based economies, we have income inequality, okay? Now, is that income inequality, you know, equitable or inequitable? And most people, I think, if they're, you know, looking at all the information out there, I think they would come up with, in fact, even if, even if you just ask most people out there, is the income inequality fair? That's what I mean by equitable. A lot of people say, no, no, it's not fair. Some people were born into rich families. Some people were born into poor families. Some people have good schooling. Some people have bad schooling. There's a lot of unfairness there. And here's the deal, okay? When you have income inequality and not everybody has the same ability, are you really distributing the good to those who value it the most if you are rationing based on price? And that's a huge issue. But here's what I want to say for this third video on this issue. Income inequality oftentimes can be handled, the issues with income inequality can be handled outside of any particular market, okay? There's a lot of things we can do. Progressive income tax taxes, okay? Progressive income taxes, uh, tax those who make more at a higher uh, uh, percentage, or let, let me put it this way, a progressive income tax is one in which the more you make, a higher percent of your income you pay, okay? So we can do progressive taxes. We can also do some transfer payments, okay? So based on economic need, whether it's unemployment compensation, temporary assistance to needy families, Medicaid, children's health insurance program, those are some in the United States where we can reallocate some money, transfer money to those who are in economic need. And we can go a lot further than that, right? We could do things about healthcare access, right? Providing healthcare to all, maybe prenatal care to all. We can give access to healthcare to all to also create more equitable um, results. We can also help out on the education side. Yes, K through 12 is free in the United States, but pre-K and daycare is not, and higher education is not, and so we can help out on the education, subsidizing the education. We can just give uh, just general transfers as just general income, okay? There's a lot of things that we can do about income inequality outside of any particular market. So imagine we had a society that we actually did what we thought was best about income inequality. Again, not creating income to be equal. Everybody I think knows that if you create incomes equal across the board, you're gonna have incredibly uh, bad incentive effects, right? So we're probably gonna still need some income inequality, right? We still need people wanting to innovate, wanting to start a business, okay? Wanting to work out hard, work hard at work, work hard at school. We need to create those incentives. And guys, we can't make the outcome equal for all most people would say, right? So, you know, is there things we can do about income inequality, okay, in which it makes it a little bit more equitable or fair society, but perhaps doesn't make it equal because of the detrimental incentive effects an equal outcome provides, all right? So, if we had that income inequality kind of like did things about it outside of the market, then maybe we do want price to ration the good for most things besides some of our most basic needs. And then you really do want to investigate price, okay? So, if you've lost sight of this video, I'm trying to say that price coordinating economic activity does a pretty good job of creating productive efficiency. Only the lowest cost producers produce it. It does a okay job besides that income inequality and the fact that demand is based on willingness and ability, okay, to distribute the goods that those who um, um, uh, uh, benefit the most from them, value them the most. Allocated efficiency often comes down to some other types of market failures, okay? Market power would result in us not producing enough of the good, okay? Market power. And then we have these externalities, which we focus on a lot, okay? And I'm going to bring in an externality. At first, I didn't have any externalities, okay? I had MPC equaling MSC and MPB equaling MSB. But now I'm going to bring in a negative externality from production, okay? So I'm going to draw this curve right here, marginal social 
cost. Now, it's a negative externality from production, which means for every single one of these goods that is produced, this vertical distance, let's just pick a good, right? We call that the 40-second good, right? This good right here would be the private cost, the cost internalized by the supplier, but there is an additional external cost making this entire vertical right there the social cost. The social cost has the private cost plus that external cost. We've got this negative externality from production. But I'm gonna say there's no externality from consumption. So MSB equals your MSB. Oh, sorry, your MSB equals your MPB. Okay, and what that means is this line's doing double duty. It's doing both P and S, private benefits and social benefits. And now I can find that Q opt, okay? Here's my Q opt, quantity optimum. So what we really wanna do is we wanna be allocatively efficient. We only wanna to produce to Q opt. Right now, the market left alone would not be allocatively efficient. They would over allocate resources to the production of the good. If we leave everything just based on supply and demand and don't intervene at all, overproduce the good, over allocate resources to the production good, and that's not good because we'd have a situation that the marginal social benefit for these goods is lower than the marginal social cost. We wouldn't want that to happen, and that would create this little triangle as our deadweight loss, okay? So what can we do? Well, a lot of economists will say, let's keep price fully flexible. Let's not control the price. Let's keep that market mechanism at play, right? Market-based economies, there's a reason for market-based economies. Let's go with a market-based intervention known as a per unit tax, okay? So I'm gonna say we can come up with the ideal tax. Probably can in the real world, but still, even if we don't get the ideal tax, we can still improve market outcomes. But I'm gonna do the ideal tax here. What's the ideal tax? It's gonna be so that that per unit tax, okay, is gonna equal the per unit externality, right? That vertical distance is the per unit externality. I'm gonna have a tax, the per unit tax be equal to that. So my tax wedge is gonna go in right here and the reason i knew exactly where that tax wedge went and i didn't put it in the wrong place is i realized that tax is making the market participants the supplier and demander internalize this cost okay so that tax is only being put on the market participants so that portion had to be the market curve which is mpb and that portion had to be the market curve which was mpc i looked at at demand and supply when i put that thing in there and this is now pc and this is now pp now watch how markets do their thing okay or this market-based intervention does this thing okay price consumer goes up price producer goes down this is a more optimum price consumer and this is actually a more optimum price producer why is that okay when that price goes up i'm making the consumer and producer fully internalize the cost of their actions the quantity demanded is going to decrease right that price consumer is up there now here's my demand curve we're gonna to move to right there, okay? Consumer surplus is now only gonna be that amount, but I want you to see that movement. That price is getting it, so now we only demand here. This is now gonna be Q tax. Quantity demanded is gonna decrease by that amount, so my new quantity demanded is right there at Q tax. Price producer, we're gonna move along that supply curve, right? So we're gonna get a decrease in the quantity supplied, so we're gonna get an equal decrease in the quantity supplied. This is gonna equal the quantity supplied right there. And here's the deal, getting back to those terms we've had right there, okay? We're still gonna be distributively efficient besides, again, the income inequality issues, which are big, okay? But we're gonna be distributively efficient in that only people who put a benefit higher than that price are gonna get the good, okay? So these are the ones that are gonna get the good. In other words, we can rest assured that we're gonna get this entire area for consumer surplus. It's not max consumer surplus, we can just call that consumer surplus. I have to say one more time, I know the income inequality is real, but I've talked about how we can maybe do some of those things about income inequality off market, right? Now for producer surplus, okay, PP to MPC, okay? This is producer surplus, producer surplus. It would be this triangle right there. And here's the big thing. Since price is still determining who produces the good, only those producers that can produce the good lower than that PP are going to end up producing the good. So when you do that market intervention, 
pushing price consumer up and price producer down. That price producer goes down, price is still determining who produces the good, check. Price is still determining who gets the good, check with a little bit of a you know straight face. Like, okay, we still gotta think about that one because it ain't gonna be quality, but still, check. Allocative efficiency. Now we are going to produce the right amount of the good, and now we are going to maximize social surplus. We're gonna be socially efficient with intervention. Market left alone, hey, we were socially inefficient outcome. We overproduced the good. Come in with a market-based um, um, intervention. That market-based intervention makes it so price is still doing its thing, both on the consu consumption and production of the goods. So those who value it most get it. Those who are the lowest cost producers produce it. And it's gonna back up that quantity demanded and quantity supplied so that our quantity tax is our quantity output. We're also allocatively efficient. Check, max, social surplus. If you watched all three of these videos, <laughs> kudos to you. I hope they helped you. We'll see you in some other videos. Talk to you later.